Let's create our own mesh. Double click on cell A3 to launch Ansys Mechanical. Here we're using Ansys version 15.0. Upon startup, check our units. Make sure we're in metric meters. Click Generate Mesh to see the default mesh that ANSYS creates. This is very coarse. If we zoom in to the region closer to the airfoil, we can spot highly irregular regions at the leading and trailing edges of the airfoil, as well as an uneven cell distribution along the edge of the airfoil. This mesh needs refinement. Right away, with mesh highlighted, expand sizing, change relevance center from coarse to fine. Click update. Right away, we can spot an immediate improvement on the mesh in the far field region but we can refine this even further in the region closer to the airfoil. We will do this by creating a sphere within which we can change the mesh element sizing. Click on Mesh Control, select Sizing. For Geometry, choose the Body Selection. Click on the Flow Domain and click Apply. Change the type from element size to sphere of influence. This will require us to specify our origin. Right now we have a global coordinate system set up, but to make it even more centered, we can create a new coordinate system. Right click on coordinate systems, insert coordinate system. Right click on the newly created coordinate system and click on rename. We can name it airfoil center. Click on Define by Global Coordinates. So now we will define our origin relative to the global coordinate system. With a chord length of 1 meter, let's change the x coordinate to 0.5 meters. Now, if we go back to body sizing, this coordinate system should appear on our drop down menu. Select Airfoil Center. Now let's specify our radius to be 3 meters. In our graphics window, we can see the sphere pop up. Let's define our element size within the sphere to be 0.05 meters. Click Update. You can conduct your own experimental studies to see how changing this sphere radius affects your results. Click on Mesh. This is a decent refinement of our far field, but if we zoom in to the, air, the region about the airfoil, we can refine this region even more. First, let's change the number of elements along the edge of the airfoil. Go to Mesh Control, select Sizing. Now using the Edge Selection feature, click on one of the edges of the airfoil. If you hold the Control button down, you can select multiple edges. Choose both edges and select Apply. Now change the element size type from element size to number of divisions. Let's specify that we want to divide the edge up into 250 cells. Change the behavior from soft to hard and click on update.
Now let's refine ourselves in the direction normal to the airfoil boundary. Go to Mesh Control, select Inflation Tool. Using the Face Selection Tool, click on the Flow Domain, click Apply. For our boundary, using the Edge Selection tool, click on both edges of the airfoil as we did before, holding the control button down. Select Apply. Under Inflation option, select Total Thickness. We're going to specify that we want 10 cells to grow at a rate of 1.2 up to a distance of 0.01 meters away from the airfoil boundary. Select Update. In using the inflation tool, this will aid in capturing boundary layer effects in our viscous model. Click on Mesh. As you can see, we've now refined ourselves our boundary cells in both directions along the, the edge of the airfoil and in the direction normal. We can spot 10 layers of cells which will approximate our boundary layer. If you zoom in closer to the trailing edge, you can see this situation isn't ideal. Earlier versions of ANSYS will give a better cell distribution at the trailing edge than this. So this is a reasonable mesh for our flow domain. You should also insert name selections just as the tutorial shows you before reading this mesh into Fluent.